Tiffany, hey girl, hey. Good risings. All right, beautiful people. Happy Tuesday, happy Tuesday. The twabble, the twabble, sawubona. Today, y'all, it is September the 29th, 2020, day 263 of year two of reading through the books of the law and the prophets. It is day 200, I'm sorry, it is day 626 of the two year consecutive count. Don't start, little lady. We just had this conversation before we went live. Okay, guys, yeah, y'all may hear her talking like in a little kitten voice in the background, getting up first thing in the morning. I told her to wait. Get some fruit. Get some fruit. Open up the refrigerator. Uh, Isaiah, come here, please. All right, y'all. So today we are reading Proverbs 16, 17, and 18. Put it on. Put it on. Um, what you call it? Two minutes. Go ahead. You have popcorn. All right, y'all. So let's go ahead and get started. Proverbs chapter 16. We can make our own plans, but Yahuwah gives the right answer. People may be pure in their own eyes, but Yahuwah examines their motives. Commit your actions to Yahuwah and your plans will succeed. Yahuwah has made everything for his own purposes, even the wicked for the day of destruction. Yahuwah detests the proud. They will surely be punished. Unfailing love and faithfulness make a time. Um, yes, unfailing love and faithfulness make atonement for sin. By fearing Yahuwah, people avoid evil. I'm sorry, y'all. Give me something. Let me write this down. So I'm going to ask a question yesterday. I just saw something. Okay. By unfailing love and faithfulness. I'm sorry. Unfailing love and faithfulness make atonement for sin by fearing you by fearing yahuwah people avoid evil when people's lives please yahuwah even their enemies are at peace with them better to have little with godliness than to be rich and dishonest we can make our plans but yahuwah determines our steps the king speaks with divine wisdom he must never judge unfairly yahuwah demands accurate scales and balances he sets the standards for fairness a king detests wrongdoing for his rule is built on justice the king is pleased with the word with words from righteous lips he loves those who speak honestly the anger of the king is a deadly threat the wise will try to appease it when the king smiles there is life his favor refreshes like a spring rain how much better to get wisdom than gold and good judgment than silver? The path of the virtuous leads away from evil. Whoever follows that path is safe. Pride goes before destruction and haughtiness before fall. Better to live humbly with the poor than to share plunder with the proud. Those who listen to instruction will prosper. Those who trust in Yahuwah will be joyful. The wise are known for their understanding, and pleasant words are persuasive. Discretion is a life-giving fountain to those who possess to those who possess it, but discipline is wasted on fools. From a wise mind comes wise speech, for the words of the wise are persuasive. Kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. There is a path before each person that seems right, but it ends in death. It is good for workers to have an appetite, an empty stomach drives them on. Scoundrels create trouble. Their words are a destructive blaze. A troublemaker plants seeds of strife. 
Gossip separates Mama, the best of friends. Can Josh help me? Yes, Josh will help her, please. Thank you. Violent people mislead their companions, leading them down a harmful path. With narrowed eyes, people plot evil. With a smirk, they plan their mischief. Gray hair is a crown of glory. It is gained by living a godly life. Better to be patient than powerful. Better to have self-control than to conquer a city. We may throw the dice, but Yahuwah determines how they fall. Proverbs chapter 17. Better a dry crust eaten in peace than a house filled with feasting and conflict. A wise servant will rule over the master's disgraceful son and will share the inheritance of the master's children. Fire tests the purity of silver and gold, but Yahuwah tests the heart. Wrongdoers eagerly listen to gossip. Liars pay close attention to slander. Those who mock the poor insult their maker. Those who rejoice at misfortune of others will be punished. Grandchildren are the crowning glory of the aged. Parents are the pride of their children. Eloquent words are not fitting for a fool, even less are lies fitting for a ruler. A bride is like a lucky charm. Whoever gives one will prosper. Love prospers. Love prospers when a fault is forgiven, but dwelling on it separates close friends. A single rebuke does more for a person of understanding than a hundred lashes on the back of a fool. Evil people, evil people are eager for rebellion, but they will be severely punished. It is safer to meet a bear robbed of her cubs than to confront a fool caught in foolishness. If you repay good with evil, evil will never leave your house. Starting a quarrel is like opening a floodgate, so stop before a dispute breaks out. Acquitting the guilty and condemning the innocent, both are detestable to you who are. It is senseless to pay to educate a fool since he has no heart for learning. A friend is always loyal and a brother is born to help in time of need. It's poor judgment to guarantee another person's debt or to put up security for a friend. Betwabu, Betwabu, Trina. It's poor. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I read it again. It's poor it's judgment coming. to guarantee another person's it debt who will put up security for a friend. Anyone who loves to quarrel loves sin. Anyone who trusts in high walls invites disaster. The crooked heart will not prosper. The lying tongue tumbles into trouble. It is painful to the pa- I'm sorry. It is painful to be the parent of a fool. There is no joy for the father of a rebel. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit saps a person's strength. If you're looking for the bowls there in the refrigerator, I used it to put up the food last night. So you're gonna have to get a different type of bowl this morning, Joshua. Get them. Get the small ones right there and just separate it out. Oh, yeah, we can use that too. All right, then share it. Smile with me. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit saps a person's strength. The wicked take secret bribes to pervert the course of justice. Sensible people keep their eyes glued on wisdom, but a fool's eyes wander to the end of the earth. Foolish children bring grief to their father and bitterness to the one who gave them birth. It is wrong to punish the godly for being good or to flog leaders for being honest. A truly wise person uses few words. A person with understanding is even-tempered. Even fools are thought wise when they keep silent. With their mouths shut, they seem intelligent. Last chapter for today, y'all. Proverbs chapter 18. And I really don't have to do like too many stories. Like if I a story comes to me that you know I can share from one of these verses, I'll share it. But the proverbs they're just like clear cut. Like you don't they don't need any kind of interpretation. 
you know it's just, it's just good sound wisdom through and through and also if you have not read the um the proverb well it's it's an it's more proverbs by king solomon i actually have it in there you can actually download it on um when i download it, you can listen to it on youtube but it is so good it's like you listen to it and it's like the wisdom in these words so i'll share it with y'all but i've listened to that quite a few times you know um and it's really short i think on youtube it's almost i won't even say it's an hour long it may be like 40 something minutes long but it's a really quick listen even the book is a really quick read but it's so much wisdom in there it, it blows your mind okay and i'll share it down here today um Proverbs chapter 18. Last chapter for the day, y'all. Unfriendly people care only about themselves. They lash out at common sense. Fools have no interest in understanding. They only want to air their own opinions. Doing wrong leads to disgrace. And scandalous behavior brings contempt. Wise words are like deep waters. Wisdom flows from the wise like a bubbling brook. It is not right to acquit the guilty or deny justice to the innocent. Fools' words get them into constant quarrels. They are asking for a beating. The mouth of fools are their ruin. They trap themselves with their lips. Rumors are dainty morsels that sink into one's heart. A lazy person is as bad as someone who destroys things. The name of Yahuwah is a strong fortress. The godly run to him and are safe. The rich think of their wealth as a strong defense. They imagine it to be a high wall of safety. Hardiness goes before destruction. Humility precedes honor. Spouting off before listening to the facts is both shameful and foolish. The human spirit can endure a sick body, but who can bear a crushed spirit? Intelligent people are always ready to learn. Their ears are open for knowledge. Giving a gift can open doors that gives access to important people. The first to speak in court sounds right until the cross-examination begins. Flipping a coin can end arguments. It settles disputes between powerful opponents. That's why do Alicia y'all. Okay, it's almost done. They're popping popcorn, y'all. Sorry. An offended friend is harder to win back than a fortified city. Arguments separate. I'm sorry. Arguments separate friends like a gate locked with bars. Wise words satisfy like a good meal, and right words bring satisfaction. The tongue can bring life or death. And those who love to talk will reap the consequences. The man who finds a wife finds a treasure, and he receives favor from Yahuwah. The poor plead for mercy. The rich answer with insults. There are friends who destroy each other, but a real friend sticks closer than a brother. And that, my beautiful people, is our reading for today. Now, look, I was um at verse 20. I remember something that happened to me. Verse 20 says, wise words satisfy like a good meal. The right words bring satisfaction. I remember when I was younger, I couldn't have been no more than, uh, I would say, how old were we? I want to say maybe like 9 or 10 years old. This was about the time where my... um mom was attending this place that was teaching it was called the school of the prophets right and i remember and it was at uh we actually had this at somebody's home the, the little gathering where the teacher was teaching and if i'm not mistaken the home we gather at i mean she's passed on since then but her name was miss linda i believe we were at her house right so this particular night i never forget it like and i only say something about it because i remember after this the gathering the meeting that they had or you might as well say like a little bible study you know how you have little home bible studies that's what it was right 
Um, but at this particular meeting, and it, it would it would probably go on maybe like two hours, right? So this particular night, I remember um, sitting in there, and I was getting hungry. And I told my mom, I was saying, you know how you was, mom, I'm hungry. You know how kids do, I'm ready to go, you know? So I was like, I'm hungry. She said, all right, we'll, we'll get something to eat when we leave, Pam. You know, so I, I wouldn't, you know, I'm like, okay, you know, I'm just... You know, I was a, a pretty reserved child. I had a smart mouth, but I was a pretty reserved child, right? You know, so I'm like, okay. You know, but I think at that point, you know how you feel. You a child, you feel like you starving to death. That I felt like I was starving to death. You know, kids, we like, you know, we, we do the most, right? But I didn't... I didn't, I didn't get all I read. Some kids fall on the floor crying and stuff. And now I was like 9 or 10 years old and I didn't do all that. But I felt that way. And what I did, like I used to always, I don't know, maybe kids do. I, I did. Even when I was younger, I used to always have conversations with God. Well, at that time I was calling him God, but I know his name. So I call him by his name. Y'all, I say father, right? And so I was there and I just closed my eyes. And I remember saying, I said, God, I'm starving to death. <laughs> I'm so hungry. <laughs> and so, but I just closed my eyes and said I didn't move my lips or anything. But what happened after that? And I may have like dozed off. You know how you sit there, you doze and you just, you listen, then you wake up. And, and I was doing one of those type of things. And, you know, when your parents catch you dozing off, they nudge you sit up, you know. But it was evening time. And I was like nine to ten years old, you know. So, um, I think I, I kept my eyes open for the rest of that time and i remember my grandma uh rode with us that night you know and so after the service i'm gonna make a long story short so after that service um as everybody began to walk you know after bible said there were people who didn't walk around talking to each other and everything right so as we're walking to the car we go to get in and i think my mom i remember the car i think she still had that little gray chevette right it was like a hatchback um but as I, I think it was that if i remember correctly it was that but as we was getting in um her and my grandma was talking and they was talking they said you know what they said it actually if i can remember their words correctly but when they said they felt full and I, I thought to me, they were having a conversation with it. The gist of their conversation was that the teacher that night felt like an actual meal. Like they like literally felt satisfied in their stomachs. So I'm not sure if this ever happened to any of you all, um, but that's what they were talking about. You know, and although I wouldn't always pay attention a lot, I couldn't tell you what in the world the teacher taught that night. I don't know what um, Miss Holloway, and that's, that was the teacher's name. I don't know what Miss Holloway taught that night but um i can't tell you not one word she said um but what i do remember that when i heard my grandma and my mom say that i noticed that i too felt full like i had literally got finished eating a meal and when i heard them say i was like and mind you because i was like and maybe it could have just been a thing where you know how you hungry for a while and then the hunger just passes until the next Mommy. wave of hunger yes all right, I'm almost done. I need some water in a second. But it I think it was more than that because when I heard them say that, um, I was thinking it, it reminded me of my hunger. But then as I thought about my hunger, I realized it literally felt like on the inside of me, like I had just got finished eating something. It's weird, but if you have experienced it, you know what I'm talking about. But what's crazy is when we got home, like when I say it literally felt like I had eaten a meal. When I got home, my whole thought process, mama said, when we get home or, or after this, we get something to eat. We didn't get anything to eat. Like, I went to bed that night satisfied. I never put a physical piece of food in my mouth. You know, imagine just like an hour or so before, I was telling, I was telling my mom I was hungry. And I was praying to y'all. And I was saying, y'all, I am starving to death, you know, as a child. But literally... Um, when I heard them say that it triggered my own self-awareness and remember that I was hungry, but then I realized that I wasn't physically hungry anymore, you know, and it literally felt like I had eaten a physical meal so that the rest of the night I didn't put a physical piece of food in my mouth. I went home and went to bed, you know, so 
um this, Alicia, this wasn't when you probably don't remember because when we went it was mama i know you remember miss holloway um but um it was mama grandma it was me and i was not so you probably don't remember but i was like nine or ten um so if you're two years younger than me you had to be like uh seven or eight you know so i'm not sure if you remember that but mama had the little gray chevette you know the little hatchback gray chevette um but i remember that you know it's like little things and i and i count those things to be like supernatural things you know but i can tell you many of those things that's happened to me in my life where i just kind of keep to myself i may have shared with my mom you know somebody close to me that won't think girl you nuts and all that's this this i was like no i, I know what happened to me you know so but that when I read this, wise words satisfy like a good meal. The right words bring satisfaction. It triggered that, you know, from my childhood, you know. So and I told you, I, I came up with a story or something before this was um, over that I would share it with you. And so but when I read that, I remembered that, like, I remember that just like it was yesterday, you know. And I, it was a summer. It had to be, it, no, it, it had to be a summer night because we came out of there. I had on shorts that night. We didn't have on jackets you know so but it, it it was a nice you know like a nice summer night where it's not humid or anything it was probably maybe like mm, 72 degrees that night you know it was warm enough to where it wasn't too hot and it wasn't too cold even where we needed a jacket because we didn't have a jacket or anything you know um but yeah so that was i just wanted to share that with you so but anywho uh all right y'all let's go ahead and go to the blessing you know where that's found that that is in numbers um chapter six but if y'all ever had anything like that happen to y'all share with me let me know i really enjoy listening to um people's let's call it supernatural experiences or um you know things like that that they happen where they think it's supernatural or it may not be supernatural because it's a good lesson I, I really enjoy um i really enjoy hearing those things i like sharing those things too i got all kinds of stories for y'all um but I, I'll, I'll share them you know as we continue like i always do especially if i can find it worth relating to something in the uh in the current days of reading anyway so all right y'all remember the first 21 verses of um number chapter six is the nazarite vow um but the blessing is found in 22 through 27. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, May Yahuwah bless us and keep us. May Yahuwah make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. All right, beautiful people. That's it for today. Um, remember, Feast of Tabernacles begins this Friday on the Sabbath. Remember, it's a true Sabbath. Um, but yeah, Feast of Tabernacles or Feast of Tents or you may hear it called Sukkot. Um, but that starts this Friday and it's a eight day feast. So the last day is, um, October the 9th, Friday. Um, yeah, so, but you will notice, and y'all hear me talk about it, you'll notice some people are celebrating it a little bit later, but according to scripture, they are off, and they got off because they celebrated Feast of Trumpets late, um, and we know Feast of Trumpets begins on the first day of the seventh month, which we know it is a new moon, remember the new moon, the new moon, the new moon, by far my favorite feast, yes, Alicia, I would have to agree with that um feast of tabernacles tents so just quick if you don't know how to sell it, i don't know why i haven't said this but y'all probably already know but just in case somebody's watching this or will watch this later on and that's like, okay well how you celebrate the feast of tents it's just like it says you who said get a tent and, and set it up you know some people actually they create gatherings uh tiffany i don't know if we're gathering but we're definitely setting up tents at our own homes um you have to come do a day with us. I really, yeah, really enjoyed it last year. But in light of what's going on with the whole uh, COVID-19, I don't, well, we could gather personally like at each other's homes or whatever. Um, we could probably do that. But the way you do it, guys, Yahuwah simply said, you set up tents. Um, as a matter of fact, I might do a video. I don't know. I may do a video 
with all the and pull out just the different scriptures on how to celebrate Feast of Tabernacles. Don't quote me on that. I'm gonna just look into it and see. And I may um do one. I, I may do one and just read those scriptures so you can see and find out where they're at and see how they celebrate it. But essentially, they just set up tents like they set up tents. Um, uh, well, someone was already in tents, but if um. If they didn't have tents, it was just a command to everybody to dwell in tents uh, for this eight-day feast. And it was a memorial of how we gather around Yahuwah and his ark, his His presence. You know, all the tribes gather around him. You know, so he is our mighty one. We gather around him in tents. And we spend that time. It's, it's a festive feast. It's a joyful feast. It shouldn't be a time for... Um, strife or anything like that it's a feast where we literally rejoice in Yahuwah's presence and that he is our mighty one right like seriously um there was a lot of gift giving and um and i hate to say that i don't want to put people in the, in the um the mind of like christmas or something like that but they did you know um they gave gifts and they gave gifts to y'all and giving gifts to y'all maybe just did like a wave offering or praise of their lips or whatever or they blessed the priest with something you know because remember every time that the people wanted to give a tangible gift to y'all they gave it to his priest because they was a representative you know the priest would offer it to Yah, and Yah in return would give it back to them. That was their portion. Everything that was given to Yah, Yah in turn gave it back to the priest. Um, but yeah, so you literally just, like, I'm going to tell you what we do. We got tents, and we just going to set it up in the backyard, and we'll spend the majority of the day. If you live in a safe neighborhood, or you live in a place where you feel it's safe, and camp out overnight. Some people, they go to campgrounds. It's a group of them that get together, and they go to campgrounds. Uh, maybe somebody has a piece of land, and everybody arrives with tents, and they spend that, that week together doing this feast, and they just enjoy uh, one another's company. They have games and stuff for the children for the adults it's literally like a it's like a small family gathering a small family reunion you know where we come together and we just you know just thank y'all for all the blessings that he's given unto us you know um but as simple as that do you, you like last year we set up the tent in the backyard you know we ate our well most some of our i ain't gonna say most our meals we ate some of our meals out there um uh we spent time out there you can have card games or whatever kind of games get, get the children in the habit of doing it or whatever um last year we had a different tent we had like an open tent this year i bought a tent tent that seals all the way around and covers the ground um so we can spend more time out there and i told the kids maybe they even want to get their sleeping bags and stuff we ain't gonna spend a night out there not that we live in a bad neighborhood or anything like that but i just you know coming in the house with a lot of dope <laughs> i'm just i'm just saying you know um although we got little cameras and we can see and we got protection we're just gonna come in the house you know um that'll be a different story once we get back to our homeland you know um wherever that is then you know because y'all said nobody will make you afraid when we get back there so um but yeah, just spend time out there in the tanks, you know, keeping the command. It's, it's, it's nothing crazy. And you explain to your children, you tell the stories uh, of what happened. And, you know, so you just kind of ingrain it because it's a memorial feast to help us remember. You know, so Yahuwah gives us tangible things to help us remember what's happened and what he's done done for us in the past how he always fought for us you know so that's why he said we are to keep these and some people think oh we ain't doing this done with it no they're, they're missing the whole point because we tend to forget sometimes you know and um and he specifically talks about ingraining these things into your children because children learn a lot of times by doing and when you ingrain it in them when they're children they tend to a lot of times keep that with them as they grow up as adults and they're they'll model what's been modeled to them you know so and that's how you would say you are keep you are to keep this alive you are to teach it to your children deuteronomy 6 specifically talks about um speaking of what yah has done for us to our children and speaking about it when we sit at our dinner table when we lie down when we get up when we take a walk down the street we're to talk about you know the goodness of yah what he's done for us because it builds faith in them it helps us all remember you know and it's, it's just good all the way around y'all so it's nothing like out of uh, religion but it, it's memorial to help us remember um 
how good he's been to us and our ancestors all the time you know so with that being said beautiful people um that's it starts october the second to the ninth um but yeah that's it i said everything else we did the blessing and everything so guys i will see y'all tomorrow bright and early 7 30 no, i'm sorry when i say 7 30 7 15 eastern standard time Peace.